With me in the studio this afternoon is Andy Matuda from Sophie. And Andy, really good to see you. Good afternoon. Yeah, thanks for having me. Just to start us with, for those perhaps tuning into the Sophie and story for the for the first time, if you would give us a bit of detail on the background here, tell us a bit about the company, if you would. Yeah, when we created this this company, uh, we wanted to put ourselves in the enterprise software business. And we looked at what other enterprise software companies were doing at the time, and they were focused on helping customers understand actual performance, and they were looking through the rear view mirror in that regard, and we wanted to do something different. So we focused on how we can help customers build growth, right. top line growth into the future. So all of the data that we manage for our clients is to support their decision making about future growth. Without giving away too many secrets. Tell us a bit more about how you achieve this. Yeah, we're quite unique in that we collect the, the data, uh, people and systems together uh, between the strategic planning activity of these corporations. These are massive, large corporations that operate globally with the operational execution activities and we blend and bring that together in a single source of truth that improves visibility and transparency for these organizations. And that transparency and visibility allows the organizations to make better, faster decisions, which is really critical in this day of, of uh, digital era that everybody's dealing with. You talk about these big global companies here. Can you give us one or two examples? Yeah, we've focused very much on, on vertical industries and we've got uh, very large anchor clients and we've grown the business since then. So for example, in the chemical vertical, BASF is a client as well as uh, Bayer Science, now Covestro and Merck and other big names like that. And then we've expanded to other verticals with big names as well. So Procter & Gamble is the largest um, uh, consumer goods products company in the world and we've added on a number of clients in in that area as well and so these are some names global names I'm sure local Certainly. to uh, your market you're familiar with PepsiCo yeah these also in the consumer goods markets are uh, very good clients of ours we've had for some quite quite some time so you operate across a number of sectors do you yeah we do in addition to those that I mentioned the, the chemical and the consumer goods packaged goods uh, we also have uh, an active position that we've taken on in the aerospace and defense, industrial manufacturing as well. Right, and you recently launched a, a new version of your software, have you, just in the last month or so? Yeah, we came out with 12.0, which is uh, very much Im improving this linkage, this connection of collaboration between the strategic activities that companies have and the day-to-day -day operational activities between cross-functional teams. So we're excited about the new release. Well, I know you've had a, a couple of really good years. Last year in particular, uh, revenue up, what was it, 23% or thereabouts, 59 licensed transactions for the year? Yeah, we felt good about our performance in, in the last three have been actually quite, quite right. good uh, uh, position for uh, us in that regard. So uh, I feel very good about both the top line growth our margins were very favorable, and some of the big clients we brought on last year also took us right to uh, improve profit as well. So all financial metrics are going the right way for us at this point in time, and we feel good about that. And what are your plans for this year? Yeah, so uh, we'll continue that. I think it's most important, um, as I mentioned, you know, over the last three years that we've um, improved at this rate. We want to continue the, the run rate of growth, uh, if not exceed it. It's very important for us to uh, continue to state a leading market position, which we have today, and stay ahead of the competition in, in the game. And so while we continue to grow, we're also continuing to invest in the business. We'll put some investment money in, in product to further the platform expansion mm -hmm. uh, strategy that we have for our organization. We'll put some money into um, growth of our distribution channels in order to expand the business uh, and then hopefully not only stay ahead of the market, but continue to operate at this uh, rate of growth going forward. And you also mention uh, the possibility for a bit of M&A action as well. Yeah, for the first time we came out and we think we're, we're mature enough, um, the market's moving uh, fast enough that there's opportunities for us to uh, look at some M&A activity. Uh, we're not interested in doing that just for the sake of growth, but the M&A activity we're interested in is to move us forward strategically. Might be um, an opportunity that might bring us into a new vertical where we don't have a presence today. It might help us with some of our scalability with the growth that we've got. And so we've got a very um, tight set of requirements that we'll look for in M&A. And if one comes along that, that, that fits the bill, we'll go after that. Well, can you tell me a little bit more about what might fit the bill? I mean, any particular new verticals you're keen to get exposure to? 
Well, we're doing some, um, uh, some investigation uh, with the insurance, the services market, right. and the banking market. So we, we just signed uh, one of the largest um, insurance companies in North America last year. With our deployment of our software, we're understanding the value proposition to that particular vertical market. And so uh, these areas might be of interest to us um, as it relates to m and activity. Someone who might already have a presence and is tangential in support of, of our core uh, value prop. So yeah. Sounds like it's going to be a pretty exciting year ahead for you, Andy. You're looking forward to it? Oh yeah, very jazz, very excited. Um, it, it's always fun to have the type of success we have and then uh, look to outdo yourself in future performance uh, against the last marks that everybody holds. Mustn't forget uh, to mention, of course, uh, you, you're due to pay your first dividend as well, are you? Yeah, you know, uh, while I talk about spending uh, money and uh, areas that we're going to invest, uh, we, we just launched our first dividend to our shareholders and, mm -hmm. and uh, while we're investing we have to make sure that we're prudent in our judgment and we continue to bring profit to the bottom line and that includes to our shareholders. Yes, absolutely. And you've got some pretty supportive shareholders here, do you? Uh, we feel we do. Uh, they've been with us a long, long time and so it's good now to see the performance of the company come around and give some return on investment to our shareholders. Yes. Tell me a little bit more about the team here at Sophie and Andy. Uh, the, the team's quite tight. It's somewhat a, a family business, so the core executive team has been around uh, with this company since the beginning of time, and we, our, our culture is, is very much holding true to our original purpose. Uh, the, the company name, Sofian, is a derivative from the Greek language, stands for the house of knowledge. And uh, what we intended to do with our original vision and this core executive team that we have uh, put in place and is still in place today is to create an asset for our clients, our corporation, corporate clients, with the data that we manage for them as a differentiation. And this core team has held together all these years in order to realize that. And we feel that we're bringing that value to our customers today. Yeah, very good. Just I'll leave the final word to you then, Andy. For people watching, why do you reckon they should Take a look at Sophie and what, what's exciting about you? Why should they uh, consider investing? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we've been so busy at looking at the operational side of our model, the market size to prove it and demonstrate it. We haven't told our story to many people. And so it wasn't a surprise that if you look at our peer group from a market value standpoint, we were behind. But now that we're getting the word out, we're telling the story more, uh, we see that there's um, opportunities for growth quite significantly. So we are focusing uh, upside growth going forward on expanding the footprint and the applications in our current customers where we have these big brand clients and we're doing that through the investment into our platform. Uh, we're going to grow the business further in the vertical markets through additional market share and we're going to invest in additional salespeople for that reason. And we're very excited about expanding our ecosystem, our partners. So we've got our first sale just recently in Japan through a partner and we've got uh, some established opportunities across China. Wow. So we're expanding into other geos where we don't have a presence today through partnerships. And so that's an important part of, of growth and, and that growth is going to drive future value for our shareholders. And you plenty of cash in the bank or enough cash in the bank to support what's going on at the moment? Yeah, we, 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 we have always been conservative with our cash and we'll continue to hold that true uh, and, and we'll apply it and use it when it makes sense to bring shareholder value. Andy, really good to see you. Thanks very much. Enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Take care.